what should you do if you don't play nearly as well in games as you do in practice? So we'll cover three reasons that performance drops off a lot between practice and games and some of the things that you can do about it as a baseball player or a softball player. So the first thing to know is that it's usually a mental thing. And why is it a mental thing when you don't have the same swing, the same, you know, you don't barrel the ball up as well in a game compared to practice, or you can just spot the ball as a pitcher in a bullpen, but then when you go out in the game, you walk a lot more, a lot more hitters, you just don't pitch as well. The mental game is huge, and you don't have the mental game when you're just throwing the ball to the catcher or you're just hitting off a pitching machine or hitting off a pitcher in a cage because there's no stakes, there's no pressure, there's no situation. You're not going to lose anything. You're not going to gain anything. You don't have all those desires and fears and doubts about outcomes that are associated with it. That's why there's typically a big drop off for pretty much everyone. You know, my command as a pitcher in a bullpen is like, I could throw a ball into a Dixie cup, just throw it there, throw it there, curveball, change up. Like my command was so much better in a, in a bullpen session than in a game, because in a game I'm revved up. I've got tons of adrenaline. I'm throwing harder than I would in a bullpen. Uh, there's just like lots of things going on. The hitters competing against me. I'm competing against him. So all those mental factors, we have to know and expect that we're not going to do as well in a game because of all that stuff. And this is where mental performance training is such a big part of baseball and softball, especially because your goal is to be able to slow the game down, take a deep breath, identify moments when you do feel like you're doubting yourself, like you're thinking way too much about what might happen or what happened in your last at bat or last inning. And when you can find ways to take a deep breath, and redirect those thoughts and just sort of say, okay, I'm just going to focus on one thing here in the present moment. I'm just going to look for the next next pitch. I'm not going to worry about the rest of the bat. I'm not going to worry about what might happen if I don't come through here. I'm just going to see the next pitch and try to put a good swing on it. Or as a pitcher, I'm just going to pick my next pitch, focus on the catcher's mitt, and try to execute as best I can. When you can go one moment to the next, that's how you reclaim your ability to just make a good pitch here take a good swing here, you know, ignore the error you just made at shortstop and just focus on reading the ball off the bat this next play. Reason number two, you don't play as well in games as you do in practice, competitiveness. This is something I witnessed as a coach when I still had my baseball and softball academy. There is just a wide range of competitiveness amongst even really good athletes like high school athletes, college athletes. You could still grade them all out by competitiveness. And a great example of this is if you watch the documentary about Michael Jordan, The Last Dance. It seems crazy that Michael Jordan was like this much more competitive than the next player in the NBA, right? These are the best basketball players in the whole world. And it's like everyone knows that Michael Jordan has like an extra gear. He's just like more competitive. He wants to win, you know, more badly. And he can like summon all this extra intensity and focus when it really matters. That competitiveness either sends you towards Michael Michael Jordan zone, Michael Jordan land, or it sends you away from it where you start to shy and you start to doubt yourself and you start to become more timid and that affects your performance in a more negative way. So how do you train competitiveness? How do you become more competitive? You know, that's a hard conversation. I don't know that I have a firm answer for that. It's a lot about who you're, how you grow up, you know, how bad you want it. I think there's a lot of innate factors. Some people are just more competitive than others. And but you do when you recognize it, when you feel like I'm nervous and I'm I'm feeling like I want to shy away from the spotlight and I don't want to compete. I want to give in. And and just that's when you have to say, nope, I'm going to take a deep breath. I'm going to refocus and I'm going to be aggressive and I'm going to compete. So competitiveness and for you parents and coaches, this is something to understand. Your kid might not be as competitive as the next and this might affect their play. And that's just part of understanding who you are as an athlete and who the kids are that you're coaching. You can't coach every everyone out of their innate personality or just traits that are, you know, deep inside them, but you can still try to create a good environment to build more, you know, competitiveness or build better leadership uh, characteristics, whatever it is, you can try to do that as a coach. But again, there are just different personality factors that do matter when translating no pressure performance into higher pressure performance, like in a game. And the third reason that, especially in baseball and softball, that players don't translate their practice skills to game outcomes and game performance is because it's just bigger than the sum of the parts. Your swing, you might have a great swing. Like the mechanics look really excellent. 
You can hit the ball super hard off the tee. You can hit the ball super hard off front toss. I've coached a lot of kids, and I've seen this, where we had a kid all winter who's like hitting 90 off the tee, you know, crushing it in BP in the cages, and the kid just can't hit in real games when pitchers are throwing hard and they've got a good slider, and he's got to like adjust to the different locations and off speed, you know, vertical, lo like hitting is hard. And having a great swing, I'm a good example of this, I don't have a great swing, but I can hit mid nineties off the batting tee. I have a lot of exit velocity, right? If I get a hold of one, I can hit it out easily. I stink at hitting. You can't put me in a game with someone throwing even 80, because I was a pitcher now, uh, and expect me to like do anything but go over three or over four. There's much more to baseball and softball, especially being a good pitcher and a good hitter. That's way beyond the mechanics of the game. So if you're trying to extrapolate how good is my kid going to be, or how good am I going to be in games? and you find yourself disappointed, you just have to understand that you need coordination. Like some players are just better at getting the barrel to the ball than others, even, in what, even with uglier swings. I've also coached kids like that. One of my seasons, maybe the kid with like the fifth best swing mechanically was absolutely our best hitter. He could just get the barrel to the ball. Didn't matter what pitch you threw him, didn't matter what location. His swing was not as sound, so he needed to really improve it before moving up to the next level. But that kid could find the center of the ball with the center or with the barrel of the bat. And that's something you can't necessarily teach. He was just better coordinated in that way. And the same thing goes with pitchers. You know, like pitchers, some guys just have better command than others. Some girls in softball have better command naturally. They have a better mind-body connection. They can just spin it better. Those things can be trained within reason, but they can't always be trained completely. And so there's not going to be a complete translation of your mechanics to your game outcomes. And it's just important to understand that that's not to discourage anyone because you can always keep training harder and practice, put in more time, get better. But ultimately, we know that everyone has a ceiling, right? Not everyone is going to, even if they train super duper hard, not everyone's going to make it to pro baseball or high D1 softball. We're not all going to make it at that point. So everyone's going to reach that point where their physical skills and their mental skills no longer translate to good enough outcomes to stay on the field. And that's when you don't get drafted or you don't get you know, a scholarship offer, whatever it is. And so we just have to understand that, look, sometimes the skills that I have when the pressure is not on just don't necessarily translate as well as I'd like to in a game. And then you try to find other ways to maximize your ability and stay in the lineup, hopefully. That's just part of the grind and the competitive nature that is being on the field and being a good athlete. So thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe below. Check out my mental performance book called This Slump Shall Pass. You'll find it in the description below along with my online courses and other baseball and softball instruction. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you here in the next video.